Hello and welcome back to the Stationary Dev. Today we have a pen review, another pen review. This one is going to be about a super affordable pen that's um, not generally available in America, but available elsewhere. But you can still get it easily um, if you if you give a uh, if you know where to look. And uh, the pin for today is a pin from Platinum, one that you may or may not have heard of. And it's called the Platinum Meteor. And uh, the Platinum Meteor is sort of like just a plastic uh, entry level um, pen. I think it's, I'd call it like just one step up barely from a preppy, but it's kind of on the same level as a preppy. Um, they are, I think they're pretty much all China exclusive. Um, so they're a pen that, that Platinum makes for the Chinese market for whatever reason. It might be available in other, other countries as well, but I know it primarily available from China. Um, and so you get it in, they all come usually in one of these sort of like big test tube looking things. So the pen will come in there in a little like plastic sleeve or whatever, and it comes in this tube. I have another one somewhere but I that I haven't opened yet, but I've lost it, don't know where it went. So you get this one that's already open. But it comes in these little test tubes, which is kind of a neat way to ship it. Uh, this one, as you can see, is a, a Harry Potter edition, a uh, limited edition one that they did a while back. And uh, these go for, depending on where you get them, you can get them from anywhere from about five to 10 US dollars. Um, I think they're most readily available on places like AliExpress, but there's also some US um, shops and stuff that you can find that carry them and ship them. So uh, to get into the pen, uh, well, first I'll go ahead and say for the money, this is, I think, a good pen for a couple of reasons. And we'll get to that when we get to it. So it's a, a hexagonal, what is that? Is that octagonal? Octagonal uh, shaped pen. So that helps with the rolling a little bit. Helps it's not roll around. It's all plastic construction. It's sort of like the, I wouldn't say it's high quality plastic. Like I said, this one is a Harry Potter um, sort of edition. So this one is the Ravenclaw. Uh, one, I got two of these, I actually got three of these, one I gave to my wife, and then I have this one, and then the one that I've, I've lost that I haven't opened yet, so it's around somewhere, and it'll turn up one day. All plastic construction, um, you can see the cap there, nothing really crazy about it, it's just injection molded plastic, um, snap cap, which is nice, so just a snap cap. It hasn't let me down or cracked or anything yet, and I've used it quite a bit. Um, and then underneath you have, it's pretty much the exact same uh, section, or I think it is the exact same section and nib and feed as comes on the preppy. In fact, I think you can, if you unscrew this, you can just interchange it with a preppy. Interestingly enough though, or fun, fun with this pen, uh, it goes by two different names. I think I said Platinum Meteor uh, when I started out, but I think it also goes by the Platinum uh, Shooting Star or Little Shooting Star, or something like that as well. And the name is reflection of what's on the nib there. So it does have kind of a cool, uh, cute nib, depending on how you want to look at it. It's got the Platinum logo, and then it's got stars on it. So it's got a big star and then a couple of little stars there. This one, I believe, is a fine nib, although it doesn't... Oh, yeah, there it goes. Fine nib there on the side. And it's that folded sort of preppy nib that you have there. Standard section and uh, feed and everything. It's a light pen. It's a very light pen because it's all plastic. So it's just up there with the preppy. It's a very light pen. Um, but, you know, plenty big enough to use unposted. You can use it posted, that doesn't affect the weighting at all just because it is so light, but I'm not a posting guy, so I'm I'm perfectly comfortable. It's kind of got like that pencil-like, you know, kind of feel to it with the hexagonal barrel and everything, which is kind of fun. If we unscrew the 
barrel, you'll see one of the things that makes this a very good value is for $5, you get a pin that comes with a converter. And I believe it comes with a cartridge as well. Uh, now, this isn't your typical um, platinum converter. And you can see I need to wash it out a little bit better. So I'll do that here in a minute. Um, but it's not your usual platinum converter. It will fit a platinum pen. But it is actually a... Um, I don't know what you would call that, a push type converter, um, or a, it's got a slider on it basically. So you have the slider, you push it down and pull it up. The, the other place where I've seen these is on the Kuwaiko Sport, the Kuwaiko Mini converters. They have a similar mechanism, which I kind of like because you can, you know, put it in and do it a couple times and get a really good uh, feel in it. It makes it easy to, to, um, rinse out when you're done, when you're changing inks or whatever. It's really good to rinse out because it's just really quick to do. Downside is, I mean, this could maybe accidentally get pushed down or something. There's nothing locking this back or keeping it um, back really other than just friction. Um, but yeah, it's, it's worked for me, but it also comes with cartridges and it would also fit, you know, a standard platinum converter if you wanted to upgrade to that. But the fact that it's a five to $10 pin and it comes with a converter, is a huge, huge, huge um, pro for this pen. Um, even though it's just an all plastic, simple pen. So let me go wash this out real quick, a little bit better, um, just so we get that blue out of there. And then we'll give it a feel and we'll see how it writes. All right, and we're back. I got the pen flushed out. A little bit better than it was, and we'll go ahead and fill it up. Now, what I'm filling this with might surprise you, because I usually don't like inks that are a lot of fuss. Um, but I'm going to fill this pen with some Noodler's Base Date Blue. Um, this is one of the only Noodler's inks that I ever bought. It was one of the first inks that I ever bought, and I just haven't really used it for anything, just because I don't want to stain up all my pens or anything like that or fuss with something that's hard to clean out um, but um, since this one's just such a, a you know a cheap pen I can just keep it always you know inked um, and and how I always have it around I'm just going to kind of dedicate this pen uh, to base state blue just so I can kind of use it I don't have this bottle huge bottle of ink just kind of sitting around so that's the plan let's see if I can get this pen inked without a uh, major catastrophe. I'm gonna put down napkin first. Bottle, pen, paper towels at the ready. And let's open her up. Base date blue, very vibrant blue. And look, good thing I had paper towels down. It does have a smell to it, stronger smell to it if you um, have never used it before. I'm gonna just uh, come in here with my other hand real quick. But with this uh, converter, you just kind of pump it up and down a bit and you should get a pretty decent fill, maybe not. I think I had a good fill. I can't tell but I'm gonna go with that oh that's probably why it wasn't on all the way ah there we go much better fill there all right so we got the pin filled enough faffing about I did get base state blue on my finger that'll be there for the next two months but Get this pen cleaned up. As best I can. Without making bigger catastrophe. Alright. What a fun time. 
All right, I'm gonna put the cap back on here, the barrel, and cap this thing while I clean up my mess. So the one bad thing about Bay State Blue is if you get it on you like that, it's gonna be there for a while. And I've got a couple of fingers of it. So that's always fun. Oh, one thing I am gonna do though is kinda try to wipe that down to help a little bit with the mess. Put this cap back on, put it back in solitary confinement. There we go. And put that away. All right, so to test out the pen, we bring in our Rodeo dot pad 80 GSM. We got our pen now full with Bay State Blue. And we'll give it a little bit of a writing test. Uh, for this one, I'll get you a little bit closer. And we have the, I'm going to call it the Platinum Meteor. Just because that's shorter and easier for me to write. Uh, this is a fine steel nib. And the ink, which we just saw happen, is noodlers. Base date. Blue. Very vibrant color. Let's do our sentence, and then I'll let you know how this nib performs. All right. So there we are. Um, the nib for me is, I mean, it's a platinum preppy nib. So if you've used a preppy, uh, you know what it what it feels like. Uh, it's a fine. It's smooth and writes in every direction. Easily. Um, so no problems with flow or anything keeping up there. Works perfectly. There is some audible feedback. So you can hear it. You can hear it, but you can't feel it. It feels pretty smooth. It just, you got that little bit of tactile where it feels like writing with a pencil, basically. Uh, but no scratchiness or anything like that. There's not going to be any uh, flex or anything with this nib. It's just because it's a, I mean, it's a preppy nib. So you're just going to get some wetter spots. And, um,. Maybe there's a little bit of bounce to it, actually. If you if you like bounce in your nibs, you can kind of tell there's a maybe just a little bit of bounce if you use just a little bit of pressure, which is kind of nice. Uh, as far as the ink goes, it's it's Bay State Blue, so it's going to be a vibrant, really vibrant blue. Uh, for me, I've kind of migrated over to using uh, Roshizuku Asagao, which is very, very, very close to the color. In fact, just a just to tickle my curiosity, I have a pen with uh, Asagao in it. And there you have it. A very similar color, but it has less fuss about it. I don't have to worry about what pin I put it in because it's going to clean out every time. Um, but in writing, it's just a little less vibrant than the Bay State Blue, which you can kind of see there. The camera is not doing a great job of showing it, but those are actually pretty, pretty similar. But Bay State Blue is the brightest, vibrantest, you know, blue you can get. So it's kind of fun to have a pin inked with it. Some people will, uh, you know, like eyedropper or preppy or something with it and keep it in that. Um, I just had this pin laying around that I wasn't really using and I uh, just decided to to um, dedicate it to Bay State Blue. So if anything happens, it's just a, 
um, you know, a pin I'm not too worried about. Uh, but anyways, overall, uh, this will be a good combination, a good pen just to keep in my on my desk, my office, if I need to scratch down a note or something. Um, the ink on here, no real bleed through with Bay State Blue on this Rhodia. Um, just a little bit of feathering right there where I pressed on it, but if I'm not like pressing it unreasonably hard like I was there trying to you know, demonstrate if there is any flex or anything, then you don't have to worry about, I don't think you'll worry about feathering or anything on this paper, um, or bleed through or anything. There's no real bleed through other than on that little spot where I did that hard press or the feathering happened. So anyways, that's a quick review of the Platinum Meteor, the Platinum uh, Shooting Star or Little Shooting Star, um, the Chinese Platinum pen that they make. In my opinion, for five or ten dollars, it's definitely worth it because it does come with a converter, comes with a cartridge. You can get it in a ton of different styles and ton of different limited editions. Um, so keep your eyes out for them. Uh, if you haven't tried it or just need a uh, you know throw in your purse or throw in your backpack or whatever kind of pen, uh, this one's a good one for it, in my opinion. Anyways, let me know if you tried the Platinum Meteor. Um, or if you like platinum entry-level pens, if you have something that you like better, uh, let me know in the comments below. And uh, also make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it. I have new content coming out every week. I've been, I usually try to get two videos out a week, but I've been a little bit slower lately with videos just because I've been busier uh, with like my work schedule and stuff. So this is still my hobby. Um, I don't get paid or anything to make these videos. It's something I do for fun. Um, so work and, and family stuff and all that comes first. So, uh, But I do try to get content out every single week. It just might only be one video some week. So uh, just keep that in mind. So anyways, until next time, I'll catch you later.